such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. <laughs> The female gender is often thought of as soft and caring, but it seems not all of them. Considering the grave crimes and shocking reactions of these six female convicts, let's watch. Number 6. Diana Lovejoy A California defendant found guilty in a botched Target for Hire plot that targeted her ex-husband fainted as the jury read its verdict in a dramatic finale to the stunning trial. Diana Lovejoy, 45, collapsed in court after she was found guilty of a conspiracy charge as well as attempted fatality, prompting loud gasps from the courtroom. When court reconvened 30 minutes later, Lovejoy was no longer at the defense table. Instead, she had been wheeled out by paramedics and taken to a nearby hospital. The same jury also found gun instructor Weldon McDavid Jr., 50, guilty of the attempted crime and attack with a fatal weapon for his role in the plot. Lovejoy and McDavid planned the crime after meeting at a gun range where she was taking lessons. According to prosecutors, he contacted Lovejoy's ex-husband Greg Mulville on September 1, 2016, posing as a private investigator claiming to have information on his estranged wife. The caller instructed Mulville at the time to go to a remote dirt road where he could pick up a package containing materials related to Lovejoy. Prosecutor Jody Breton told jurors. Mulville and a co-worker, Jason Kovac, drove to the area together to look for a package taped to a power pole. Kovac testified that they saw some rustling in the bushes, then noticed what looked like a person lying down with a rifle pointed at them. The witness said shots rang out, and he and a wounded Mulville took off running. Jurors who deliberated two days before reaching their verdicts said they didn't believe McDavid's testimony. We rejected his story pretty much off the bat, a 63-year-old male juror who declined to give his name told a newspaper. He was lying. It was getting absurd at times. Number 5. Alexandria Thomas A woman accused of stabbing her boyfriend in a Publix parking lot told investigators she poked him with the knife, according to court documents. Alexandria Thomas, 18, broke down during her first appearance at the court where the judge said that doctors placed the victim, Joseph Genovese, into a medically induced coma because of the severities of his injuries. Investigators with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office said the two got into a fight in the parking lot of the public store in Royal Palm Beach. I just wanted him to leave me alone, Thomas told investigators, according to the probable cause affidavit. Investigators said that's when Thomas pulled out an 8-inch knife from her purse and knived Genovese in the chest. It's unclear why the couple was arguing. Number 4. Michelle Blair Declaring a house of horrors closed, a judge sentenced a Detroit mother to life in prison for taking the lives of two of her four children and storing their bodies for years in a home freezer. Michelle Blair was charged, convicted, and sentenced to less than four months since a shocked eviction crew discovered the children's bodies in a freezer at the Detroit home. She pleaded guilty in June to first degree, insisting she'd take the penalty if Michigan had it. You impose the penalty on your own children, Judge Dana Hathaway said. I did, Blair, 36, replied. Blair took the life of her 13-year-old daughter, Stoney, in 2013 and 9-year-old son, Stephen, in 2012. She claims they had physically hurt a sibling, though she didn't witness the alleged crime and never reported anything to police. Prosecutor Karen Goldfarb said there was no evidence of such a crime in the house. Blair poured scalding water on the victims, beat them with sticks, and put trash bags over their heads. As a mother, one of your primary responsibilities was to protect your kids, the judge said, and in that respect, you failed in the worst possible way. Thankfully, that house of horrors that you created is no longer in existence. Before receiving the mandatory no-parole sentence, Blair spent several minutes criticizing the fathers of the children who didn't have much of a role in their lives. Defense attorney Wyatt Harris and Blair was herself physically hurt as a child, had little education, and then had her own children. I'm not making an excuse, but it didn't allow her to cope with the situation, Harris said. Blair has expressed no remorse and refers to the gone children as demons. I haven't lied about anything, she told the judge. As horrendous as everybody think I am, that's fine. Number 3. Kayla Norton A Georgia judge has sentenced Kayla Norton, 25, and Jose Joe Torres, 26, to spend a combined 19 years in prison for their role in a group's racist rampage at an 8-year-old's birthday party, an attack that included shouting racial slurs, making armed threats, and waving Confederate battle flags. I'm so sorry that happened to you, Norton told the family that endured the attack, weeping in the courtroom at her sentencing. I am so sorry. After telling the court that she accepted responsibility for her actions, Norton turned to the area of the courtroom where families who attended the birthday party were seated. But I want you all to know that that is not me, Norton told them. That is not me. Norton and Torres, who are not married, have three children together. Prosecutors say they were part of a gang of white supremacists who targeted African Americans with racist taunts and threatened to hurt minorities. In court, both Norton and Torres sat hunched over and crying after Superior Court Judge 
William Bull McLean, handed down his sentence, 13 years in prison and 7 years probation for Torres, and 6 years in prison with 9 years probation for Norton. Both of them are also banished from Douglas County, McLean said. Number 2. Elizabeth Escalona A Dallas judge sentenced Elizabeth Escalona to 99 years in prison for beating her 2-year-old daughter into a coma and gluing her hands to a wall because of potty training problems. Escalona, 23, had pleaded guilty earlier to a felony court of injuring a child and admitted earlier to physically hurting daughter Jocelyn Cedillo, saying, only a monster does that. But she rejected a plea bargain that called for a 45-year sentence and instead asked the judge for a second chance. Police said she kicked Jocelyn in the stomach, beat her with a milk jug, and then superglued her hands to an apartment wall. A doctor testified that Jocelyn suffered bleeding on her brain which put her in a coma for a couple of days, a broken rib, multiple bruises and bite marks, and skin torn from her hands from being stuck to the wall. State District Judge Larry Mitchell said he believed that Escalona was a victim of domestic and physical hurting as a child. But I can't consider that evidence outside of the context of this trial. To me, it comes down to a single salient fact. On September 7, 2011, you savagely beat your child to the edge of passing. For this, you must be punished, he said. Escalona had no visible reaction to the verdict, but her family members wailed and wept with their heads in their laps as TV cameras surrounded them, a newspaper reported. Number 1. Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham A Charleston courtroom was the setting for a bizarre scene when two lesbian lovers collapsed, wailed uncontrollably, and hyperventilated after hearing they would serve life for taking the life of a three-year-old girl. Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham had to be picked off the floor by court officials and held in chairs as they were wheeled out of the room. The mother of Butts was physically thrown out by three staff members after shouting loudly at her daughter to get up, then screaming, I can't leave my baby like this, my baby is out. As sobs echo from the gallery, a clerk can be heard to ask, do we have any EMTs in the building? While others try to get a panting Butts to slow down her breathing. Butts and Cunningham, both 25 from Somerville, South Carolina, were told they will spend the rest of their lives in prison for beating Serenity Richardson in 2009 while the toddler was in their care. Serenity was visiting Butts, her godmother and her mother's best friend, and Cunningham, who was Butts' lover, for two weeks at their home in Somerville, South Carolina, when the incident took place. It is nearly impossible for words to accurately describe what these women did to that poor little girl, said Elizabeth Gordon, assistant managing solicitor for Charleston County. They beat her repeatedly both with a belt and with plastic coat hangers. You can see the outlines of the strikes on this child's body. There is not one area of this child's body that was unharmed, except for the soles of her feet. By the time paramedics reached Serenity, she had already passed and had been placed on ice and exposed to bleach in desperate attempts to revive her. Sentencing the vile criminals, Judge Richardson said, To ignore what must have been excruciating sounds that came from that child is more than disconcerting to this court. As such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.